We just thank you so much for spending your Sunday morning with us. Uh, my name is Andy Clark again. I'm the lead pastor here. And I uh, hope you're enjoying your Memorial Day and hope that uh, you got some good things planned. You know, maybe you get some rest or maybe you spend time with some family. And uh, just, you know, with Memorial Day, we just thank the armed, armed services so much, you know, the armed forces. Uh, we just thank all the branches of all of our military who, uh, who help us and serve us. And, uh, you know, give us these freedoms that we have. And one of the freedoms that we have is the ability to come in on a church on Sunday morning and worship and hold our Bibles and worship Jesus, you know. So this is one of the rights that we have here in America that they help to defend. And Memorial Day is all about remembering those in battle, you know, who have lost their lives. And it's really fulfilling the scriptures uh, when Jesus says there's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. And that's exactly what the military do you know whenever they sign up they know that this could be the ultimate sacrifice but they do that for us for people they've never met you know so i just want to give you thanks if you are part of the military day i just thank you so much for your service and high rock church will always thank you for your service we stand with our military we stand with our flag and we always will um we thank you so much for that but so for the time being right now i would just like to have a a moment of silence uh, for those who have fallen and for their families. Lord, we just thank you so much, God, for who you are. And uh, we just thank you uh, for the gift of you and your word, Lord. And we just thank you that we can come in here this morning and just worship you and serve you. And we know it's because of the fact that we have men and women who have, who have dedicated their lives to be able to protect our freedoms, Lord. And so we just thank you for them today. And, God, we just uh, ask that you be with their families today uh, in this day of, of mourning and remembrance. And I just pray that you're with them and just give them peace in the midst of the storm. And just uh, let them remember all the good times, Lord, and just uh, have them good memories. And so, God, once again, we thank you for those people who have sacrificed all for us. And we give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. All right, so thank you. So, uh, so yeah, so we're going to continue our message series today called People's Choice. All right, so last week was Pentecost. We had our outdoor service. If you was there, that was a good time. Uh, Pentecost is always a good time to talk about, you know, the Holy Spirit. Man, I tell you, it's such a beautiful blessing that God has given us. So we're going to continue with the regularly scheduled program today, and we're going to continue on People's Choice. And what this series is about is for a few weeks uh, we have people vote on different areas of their walk with Christ they would like to know more about, they would like to grow in. And so we've talked about a lot of stuff. We've talked about uh, getting past our past and self-forgiveness. We've talked about anger and being judgmental. Uh, you know, we've talked about a lot of different subjects. So if you want to go online and listen to those, you can, hrclex.life. And today we're going to talk about controlling our tongue, okay, controlling our tongue. Um, and uh, And... So when it comes to stuff like this, so today what we're going to do, we're going to hit home a little bit with it, all right? So today, some of today may not be the easiest day, but there is positivity in it, all right? So if you wore your flip-flops today, you may have wanted to wear your steel toed flip-flops. But uh, <laughs> So when it comes to this, we've had like a grouping of different things that we struggle with uh, over the past few weeks, uh, like anger and being judgmental and now, you know, controlling our tongue. And in a way, some of the teaching that goes with these can apply to all of them, all right? So we're going to take a little different route. But on 421, on Sunday the 21st, April 21st, we had a message on anger. And the last part of it, we had the steps we could take in order to respond well, where we pause, we reflect, and then we think about how we want to respond. We respond correctly, and we... And we uh, find out what's in our heart to make us angry, okay? So this can apply to something like this today, right? Like uh, with controlling our tongue, we definitely want to pause. We want to reflect on what we're going, you know, what we're going to say. So you can check that service out. But today we're going to take a different route. Like I said, we're going to hit home a little bit. So in the book of Luke, chapter 6, all right, we're going to be in the book of Luke, chapter 6. Luke is the third gospel in the New Testament. And this is Jesus speaking. And we're going to begin in Luke 6 and in verse 27. So we'll be mainly in the book of Luke today, but we're going to have a little bit of Proverbs mixed in just to give us a little bit more wisdom on, on what we want to learn about. So here we go. Luke 6, chapter 27. Uh, Luke 6, verse 27. 
He says, Judd, uh, sorry, 27, here we go. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you. And from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. And we'll skip down to verse 37. He says, judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. So here we have this teaching from Jesus. And what we see, we see a lot of conflicting things. You know, we see a lot of opposites here. It's called duality, all right? We see there's love, and then there's hate. There's blessing, and there's cursing. There is do not judge and judge. You know, condemn, don't condemn, give, don't give. So what we see, we have these two opposites here. And usually whenever we read verses like these, we think a lot about our actions. How am I loving people? What am I giving to people? How am I condemning people? You know, we think about our actions, which is right. We should think about that. But today we're going to expand our thinking on a little bit. We're going to put our words in here, okay, the way that we respond. We're going to put our words and our tongue in here. We're going to see what Jesus has to say about these. I think a lot of us can relate to this one today. So in Proverbs 21, verse 23, reads, Whoever keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. I think some of us can relate to this today. You know, he's like, look, if we know how to hold our mouth and we know how to hold our tongue, we're going to save ourselves from a whole lot of trouble. And that's what I'm guessing why people ask for this, this topic. You know, because it's like, hey, look, Andy, I don't know, man, like my mouth and my tongue, like they just keep getting me in trouble. For some reason, I just keep getting in trouble with it because I'm guessing People are asking from the negative view because I don't think it's like, hey, Andy, you know what? I got a real big problem of being way too nice. You know, I got a big problem being way too I talk about Jesus way too much. I'm helping people way too much. I'm encouraging people way too much. So, Pastor Andy, I need a message on how to stop being so nice and being so encouraging to everybody. Right? I don't think this is the reason why people ask. That proverb right there is I believe why people ask. Like, I keep getting in trouble with my mouth. I need some help, all right? So when it comes to Jesus' example here in chapter 6, we can see some ways that we could probably be uh, in, our, in our tongue. Like he says, loving, loving. Maybe we feel like our speech and our tongue isn't that loving. Maybe we feel like we're unloving, like, uh, like, like we're too rude or something, you know, like we don't speak very kindly to people. Maybe we feel like we're being angry, and the way we come across to people, our tone doesn't seem very loving, all right? And then we have uh, cursing. Jesus talks about cursing in here. I, I know people say, man, I need to stop cursing, you know, man, I, I cuss way too much. Now, I get it. Now, there are cultural curse words, which, you know, we don't want to say as Christians for our walk, but also we're talking about cursing the way the Bible sees it because the way the Bible sees a curse word is something that we say to someone that, in, that affects them negatively. Like, for example, telling somebody, well, you'll never amount to anything or you'll never get over this. That is a biblical curse word because we just kind of curse their heart and their mind, right? So, so, so maybe that's a reason why we feel like uh, we need to control our tongue a little bit. Or maybe this instant reaction and this retaliation, like Jesus says, somebody smacks you on the cheek and you just go ahead and smack them right back. You know, so it's like this, uh, uh, people would say, well, I don't really have like a filter. You know, I just think it and I just say it. If it comes in my brain, it just comes out of my mouth. And this whole retaliation thing, well, if somebody says something to me, I'm going to say something right back. I'm not going to be nice to them. Right? If somebody gets on me, I'm coming right back at them. And that's some things Jesus is saying. He's also talking about taking away from people. Now, whenever, you know, we have to realize that some words that we use actually takes life from people. You know, like if you say, look, you know, man, you'll never amount to anything. I mean, that's literally stealing from that person. There's also this super negative talk. Maybe we just have like this negative view on life. No matter what comes out of two, no matter what's happened, we just view it negative, And so we always speak negative. Well, that's just never going to work. I don't know why we're doing this. This is crazy. 
You know, so we always have this negative view of life, so it comes out in our tongue. Jesus talked about judging. Making a judgment call without knowing all of the facts. And so we see somebody, we see a situation, and we just go ahead and it just blurts out of our mouth. We know everything about the situation. We don't hardly know what's going on in it, but yet we're just going to judge this person. And then he talks about condemning, which condemning is even further than that. It's going ahead and giving somebody a guilty verdict. So no matter what they do, no matter what happens, we know they're guilty. We know whatever we think about them and whatever we're saying is right. So we don't even know all the situations, and now we've judged and condemned this person. So maybe we feel like that is the, our problem. And then, of course, there's unforgiving, right? There's just unforgiving talk to where it's just, it's just relentless, and we really don't care if the person gets hurt or not. All right, so here's... Here's these examples. So, see, if we broaden the horizon on what Jesus was saying in chapter 6 and, and take it to control in our tongue, we can see these examples on how we, we just rash out with our tongue, with our words, and maybe not put a lot of thought into it. And some people say, well, Andy, I mean, this is hard. They're like, I have a really problem with this. I just can't control the way I talk. It just comes, it just comes out, you know, like I'm having a real trouble controlling my tongue. But Jesus handles this. As we keep reading in verse in Luke chapter 6, verse 32, he says, If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. So we say, well, I just can't control my tongue. I just can't do it. But here's the deal. We do have the ability to do that because in certain situations, we do hold back our tongue. In certain situations, we do control our tongue. You know, a lot of times it may be like at work or something. You know, we don't, you know, we don't really tell our boss what we're really thinking. Or could be in our marriage. You know, it could be in our marriage. We don't always tell our spouse that we control it back. Or a lot of times people, you know, control their tongue around me. Because somebody will come up and say, well, so-and-so is like this, and they talk like this, and they said that. And I'm like, really? I don't see that. I don't really get that from that person. They're like, well, of course you don't. You're Pastor Andy. P people are nice to you. And I'm thinking, yeah, I mean, sort of. But at the same time, I, I mean, I get it, right? And so... So we see that, honestly, we do have the ability to do good, all right? So it's not the fact that we can't control our tongue. It's not the fact that we can't do these things. It's the fact that we pick and choose whenever we want to. And usually we pick and choose whenever we want to whenever it benefits us. Lending to those who will receive back. Sure, it's easy to be nice to somebody whenever we want something from them, whenever we have an agenda, you know, the reason why we don't do stuff at work is because, well, we want to keep our job, right? The reason why, you know, we don't uh, tell, tell our wives everything we're thinking, guys, is because we want to sleep in the bed and not on the couch, right? So, so, see, we have this ability to control our tongue. We're just picking and choosing. And sometimes it's just to save our reputation. You know, we don't want, to, we don't want people to think a certain way about us. So, so what I'm getting at here is that in some way, fashion, or form, we do have the ability to control our tongue. We do have the ability to apply these principles that we're wanting. We're just picking and choosing. So in Proverbs 18.21, it gets down to this, this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. So death and life are in the power of the tongue. So that's what we're getting at now. We're starting to see the two opposite ends. So we can either help build life or we can help take life. And the thing about it is there's so many things in this world that we're powerless over. We don't have power over, especially when we look out in the world how the world is today. We have very little power on what we can and can't control. This is something in our life that God has given us power over. We have the power to choose our words. We have the ability to choose our words. And we have to realize that there are power in our words, man. We have this ability to heal people, to be encouraging to people, to lift people up. But we also have this ability to absolutely tear people down. 
to take life away from them. And so that's what he's saying. He's saying, look, those who love it will eat its fruit. So if we're out there too negative, if we don't have a filter and we just blurt things out whenever we think it, if we're just, you know, we're just saying things, then guess what? It's going to come back on us as well. That's why Jesus says, do not judge or you will be judged. He's not talking about eternal judgment because that's only through the blood of Jesus Christ. There's only one way not to be judged eternally. He's talking about here on earth. He's saying, look, if we go around judging people and saying all these things, then people are going to look at us in the same way. So if we have a situation in our life which we complain about a lot, which whenever it happens, we just blurt stuff out, then all of a sudden we go to doing it, people's going to be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't you just say that over there and now you're over here doing it? See, you judge, now you will be judged. We condemned, now we will be condemned. So life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it is going to eat its fruit. And Jesus also talks about this golden rule, right? That's what we call the golden rule. Do unto others as we want done unto us. So basically, if I go out, and I don't have a filter, I'm not controlling my tongue, and I just say whatever, it doesn't matter if it hurts you or not, then basically what I'm saying is, hey, please do that to me. I'm showing you this is the way that I want to be treated. Because Jesus says, do unto others as you want done unto you. So if I go out and do these things, basically I'm teaching people to treat me the same way. But the problem is I get upset whenever it happens. You know, I do something to somebody, it's okay, somebody else does it to me, and I'm all upset, but, you know, I did the same thing to other people. So, you see, that's what I'm saying. See, we're going to hit home a little bit more today with this because here's the deal. It takes pain for people to change, you know. Whenever we have something in our life, we have this thing that's happening, and it's causing a little bit of stuff, we'll keep going with it. But once we get to a point to where it causes this, like, excessive pain to where it hits something that we truly value, that's whenever we'll start looking at it. That's whenever we'll start growing. You know, so, so that's why we're hitting home today because if we really want to change this, we really got to see it for what it is, you know. And that's where Jesus goes too. Jesus goes there in, in verses uh, 41 and 42. Because he says, why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye and do not notice the log that is in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me take out the speck in your eye when you yourself do not see the log that is in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck that is in your brother's eye. See, so Jesus is sitting home here, right? This is a hard teaching. He even calls them hypocrites. So he's saying this for the purpose of hitting home, right? To hit into the heart. Because what he's trying to do, he's trying to have us a humble perspective. And the first thing that happens when we hear this, we think of somebody else. Oh, well, that person judged me or that person did that to me. And so now, you know, they're the ones that need to listen to this. But Jesus' prerequisite on helping anybody with their situations I'm judging anybody is we have to be able to admit that we do something wrong first. We can't go out there until, until we can realize that we did something wrong, anything wrong. We have no business telling somebody else what they're doing, trying to correct them. And that starts at home. Like I said, the first thing we want to do is think about somebody else. And so Jesus is trying to hit home with this, right? And it's even, even to the point, you know, like with social media, you know, man, we got to be careful because so many times people go on social media and it's like, oh, so-and-so did this and, did, and they did that, but there's never anything else in the situation there. All it is is I did everything perfect and somebody else did this to me. So it's hard to like really get into those things because we have to be able to say at least we did something because, I mean... <laughs> It's not like we do everything perfect and people just come against us, right? Especially like with marriage counseling, okay? This is a good example of marriage counseling. So, so, so when a couple comes in or a person comes in, they say, well, my spouse does this and my spouse does that. You know, they're giving me this list of things that they do, and I listen. I'm like, okay, I'm writing stuff down. But eventually the question comes out, well, what are you doing? And then however they handle the situation tells me where we're going to go from here, all right? Because if I say, well, what are you doing in the situation? They go, 
Well, what do you mean? Well, I, I, I'm not doing anything. I just told you what the problem is. It's my spouse. They're doing this. I go, okay, hang on a second. We're going to have to go way over here in left field because we ain't, we ain't ready to change yet. But if they come up and start saying things like that, I'm like, what are you doing? They're like, well, you know, I am kind of mean or I do come home, right? They start admitting some things that they do. I'm like, okay, okay, we got something to work here. Now we can help with the changing process. See, so, so that's how Jesus is saying about this, you know, about controlling our tongue. This is meant to humble us, all right? This is meant to humble us, and that's why uh, we go this route is because, like I say, the pain and the misery that we have in our minds and in our hearts, that's what helps us change. Because what's going to happen is if we don't control our tongue, it's going to cause problems somewhere. I mean, these are things that relationships end over. These are things that careers end over. You know, these are things that gets us put in Facebook jail for 30 days or whatever. You know, I mean, there's some serious implications to this stuff. And so what happens is we just do whatever we want to do. And then once it causes a big problem, then we go, oh, my gosh, wait a minute. I need to start controlling my tongue a little bit. So I'm guessing with this being one of the highest things people voted for, there's some situations going on in our lives where our tongues are causing problems. Our words and our reactions and the way we're handling things are causing issues. And so that's why I say, let's get to the heart of the matter here. Let's don't beat around the bush anymore. Let's just see it for what it is. But the positive end of this, which that was positive, just, just because it sounded negative, it's a positive because it brings us to another level with God, right? So it's a positive. The even bigger positive is the way God sees it, and that is the fact that we do have this power to be able to do these great things in our life, you know? It's almost like God is saying, look, man, I have given you this ability to choose your words so that way they can build people up. But really what happens is we're misusing them. You know, if we're just rash, if we're just too negative all the time, we're just exploding and doing all these things, what happens is we're taking this God-given ability to be the light of the world, to be the salt of the earth, to be the, these things that Jesus wants us to be in people's lives, and we're totally misusing it. See, so that's what God, God wants to dial us back and say, hang on a second. This can be a totally different situation. See, so that's the positive. That's the bigger picture. The bigger picture is the good that comes out of this, is the good that we can do in our lives. Because in Proverbs 12, 18, it says, There is one whose rash words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Now, whenever we're rash, and we just say things, and we don't really think about them a lot, we can really cut people to the core. You know, it's easy to just say things right out of our mouth, not give a lot of thought to it, and, man, it can really, really just hurt people. It can hurt them to the core. And we have to understand that whenever we do stuff like that, a lot of times we're honestly surrendering ourselves to the devil. Think about it like this. If every time a thought comes in our brain, we say it, basically what we're saying is, hey, Satan, go ahead and tell me what you want me to say because I'm not going to see if it's from you first, so I'm just going to go ahead and say it. So a lot of times we turn ourselves over to the devil for him just to say whatever he wants to because here's the thing about it, guys. In the physical realm, there's a lot of minutia. We can't tell good from evil. It seems like it blends. But once you get in the spiritual realm, it's not like that. It's either good or it's evil. There's no mixing, okay? There's no light and dark. It's God and Satan ain't, ain't holding hands on a couple things here, okay? It's either God or it's Satan. And so if we're doing things that are tearing people down, that are negative, that are doing these things, well, where do they come from? There's only two options. Because Jesus says it here in the book of Luke, chapter 6, verses 43 through 45. He says, for no good tree bears bad fruit. Nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit, for each tree is known by its own fruit. For figs are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor are grapes picked from a bramble, a bramble bush. The good person out of the treasure of his heart produces good, and the evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of his heart, the mouth speaks. And that's the case of the matter right there. Out of the abundance of the heart... The mouth speaks. You know, our mouth is like a fruit, okay? It's just telling everything that's going on. That's like the last thing of the process. 
Before our tongue speaks, it goes through a whole lot of filters, a whole lot of stuff before it comes out of our mouth, whether we realize it or not. And so if we got an abundance, if we have abundance of bad things that comes out of here, guess what? We got abundance of bad things going on up in here. But if we got a bunch of good things coming out of here, congratulations. We got an abundance of good things going on up in here. Right? But a lot of times, you know, it's back and forth. In some areas of our lives, we really need to grow. But in some areas of our lives, we're doing pretty good. So that's why we get good and bad coming out of the same mouth. But the, but, but the issue is the heart. And that's where God's going with it. It's not just something that we're just dealing with here on earth. This is something deeper. This is something spiritual, okay? This is a spiritual root inside of our heart that we need to deal with. So in Proverbs 15, 28, he says, The heart of the righteous ponders how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things. So here we have two options. We can either ponder or pour out. So if we're just pouring things out of our mouth, if every time it comes, we just pour it out. If every time we get mad, we just let them fly. If every time we hit our finger, you know, three, three words come out of our mouth. If every time we don't like what our spouse does, we just start laying into them. If every time somebody runs around and we feel like they're not watching their kids, we just go off about everything. If every time we go to Walmart, we look at people. Like, if every time something happens, if we're just pouring out, you know, that's a deeper situation. So what God's saying is, hang on a second, ponder. Ponder, stop, pause, consider, think about it, wrestle with it, like, like, like push the pause button on this thing. Because see, when we start pondering on things, this takes a whole deeper route. Because we can know we need something and say, man, you know what, yeah, I do need to control my tongue. And we can think about it, yeah, I, you know, I do need to do that, and then we let it go. That's not a ponder. I mean, that's a good start to even admit the fact that we have something wrong. That's a good start. I'm not saying that, but that's not a ponder. See, so whenever we ponder, what happens is we go into our heart and we start thinking about it and considering it. And what that does, that brings certain things that we need in order to truly get over this. For instance, awareness. No, whenever we ponder in our heart, we start becoming aware of the fact that we do this. And a lot of times, certain situations bring these things out. And that's, that's what we can ask ourselves. Is there a certain situation that, I, man, I just, I just fly off the handle. You know, it just comes out. Because the truth is, we probably have areas of our lives where we are doing good in this, like I said, but there's certain things. So instead of just saying, well, I don't have a filter, well, yes, I have a filter, but where does the filter seem to leave, right? So we can start pondering on these things. Is there a certain mood? Now, if I know when I get angry, things come out, I need to be aware of that. I need to be aware that when I get angry, things come out. So maybe I just need to, to back away, pray, or go somewhere else. You know, because, man, once things get rolling when you're angry, boy, sometimes it's hard to stop. Or am I over 60 and just lost my filter? <laughs> I just say that because a lot of times, you know, people get, you know, older or whatever. They're like, yeah, you know. I'm this age, I just don't have a filter anymore. So. And also, too, this helps us apply the self-control. Because once we're aware of it, then we can start some self-control. Because the problem is here, we don't have any self-control. All right, like in this area right here, the issue is when it happens, it happens. We don't have any way to dial it back. We don't have no self-control. We don't have any coping skills. It's just bam, there it goes. All right, so we need to start learning this self-control. And we also need to ask ourselves, you know, is this the type of person I really want to be? Is this type of person I really want to be? Do I really want to be this person who has this negative effect in people's lives? Do I really want to be? Is this, is this really what I say? Is this one of how I want to represent myself? Is this how I want to represent God? You know, these are things that we got to ponder on, man, and we got to go deep into our hearts to figure out, to, to truly get over. So in the book of Ephesians, it says, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as good for building up. That's fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. This corrupting talk talks about future trash, all right? Back in those days, you would take all your trash and collect it up and, and cess and put it in a bucket, and you take it to a hole, and you pour it in there. And that's what it's talking about. It's talking about the cesspool, okay? It's no good, putrid, nothing good coming out of it, and that's the way the Bible sees stuff like this, especially the curse words and things like that. So he's like, look, don't let that come out of our mouth, but build people up. Once again, the difference between death 
in life. I mean, the Bible over and over, it just states over and over the fact that we have this ability, man, to build people up. We have this ability to be there for people and be positive. And we can be, you know, the positive change in our marriages that we're wanting in our relationships and in our workplace and in our world, right? We can do these things. So we want to give grace and we want to speak this way for not only that person, but for those who hear, because whenever we speak this way, we're not only being that way for that person, but everybody who hears is affected. Especially on social media, everybody who reads it is affected. So we got to ask ourselves, is that really what I want to do? So when I was going through my changing process, because trust me, this used to be a big issue for me. Okay, I used to be a very angry person, and I didn't think about anything I said. Okay, I just went out, I was mad all the time, and I talked to people really bad, and I would just you know, do all these different things. And, uh, and so I didn't have a filter, and I didn't, you know, I was, so whenever it came time for me to change, when I got really into Jesus and trying to get clean and sober, you know, it, it really hit me hard. Because really what happened was, the hard truth for me was, everybody that I met was worse after meeting me. You know, I didn't add to anybody's life. I made people's life worse. And it's like this, life is tough enough. Life is tough enough. People have their own struggles, and you meet somebody who makes it worse. Like, it just hit me. I don't want to be that person anymore, man. I want to be encouraged. And I want to be uplifted. I want to give people the benefit of the doubt. I want to make sure I'm doing all I can to help people and build them up, you know? So that's what hit me, and that's what I was saying about why we went the route we went. Because until it hits in here, until it hits the heart, it's not going to be that big of an issue enough to even put time and effort into so we have to realize that, yes, I mean, it's almost like, who do we think we are? Why do we get the right to go out and just say whatever we want to and ruin people's lives? Why do we get to go, go out there and just say, well, I'm going to say whatever I say, and you just got to deal with it? That is selfishness, and that is pride. That's saying, I don't care how it affects you. As long as I want to say it, I'm going to say it. And that is selfishness, and it's pride, and it's ruining people's lives. It's making everything else difficult. And we're not honoring God. And we're not honoring Jesus. We're ruining our Christian walk. I mean, there's just so many things. It's not building the kingdom of God. So see, that's the hard truth we have to learn. And that's when we change. It's when we realize the truth of the situation. So I got a few questions we'll go through real quick that we can ask ourselves that people taught me before I say things. One, is it true and right? Is it true and right? Like, is it the truth? Because a lot of times when I say something, I don't even know if it's the truth or not. It's, it's my evaluation of the situation. And is it really the right thing to say? Like, do I really need to be saying this right now? Do I really know the truth? Is this something that I feel like I can say to somebody else? Next is, what is my motivation? What's my motivation? Why am I really saying this thing? Like, am I just trying to win a useless argument? Once again, is it selfishness and pride? Is it just the fact that I want to say it and it doesn't matter? Like, why am I really wanting to say what I'm trying to say? Next is, so how is this person going to react? What's this going to do in this individual's life? Like, how are they going to react? Are they going to be sad? Am I pointing out a flaw in their life they already know is there? Is it just going to take them deeper in the hole that they're already in? Is it going to make them mad? Now, granted, the truth hurts. So, I mean, if we're doing things for God and we're doing it the right way, sure, people are going to get upset. We can't control that. But this isn't what we're talking about here. Uh, you know, if we can't answer the first two questions with good answers, they're probably going to get mad. They're probably going to get mad at us. Uh, the next one is, is it building life like God wants? You know, is this really going to build life? Is this really going to encourage somebody? Am I really going to uplift their life? Is it really going to be this thing where I feel like uh, I'm being as positive influence in their life? Is it building the kingdom of God, right? Like we want to make sure that whenever we say it, that even if it is a difficult thing to say, we're saying it in a way that the person can hear and receive it. So that way it's not tearing them down. And then the last one is, does it need to be said now? Does it really need to be said right now? Should I just wait? Should I just ponder on it a little bit? Should I pray about it? 
Because whenever we have our first reactions, a lot of times that's our flesh reacting, right? We just come out and say it. But then later on we get to thinking about it and we're like, well, you know, we still wouldn't have said it that way. Well, if we didn't say it, we could have had time for the Holy Spirit to get in there and say, wait, wait, ho, 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 ho. I interject on that one. I don't think that's a good idea. But one thing I learned, too, the Holy Spirit doesn't just tell you what to say. He also tells you what not to say. Married folk. <laughs> okay. Just because you think it don't mean you got to say it. All right, so these are different, you know, and there's all kinds of questions. You know, is it true? Is it right? Is it necessary? Uh, does it... Does it need to be said? Does it need to be said by me? Does it need to be said right now? You know, there's all kinds of different little questionnaires we can go into our heart and mind and figure out, is this really what I want to do? So these are ways that we can ponder, stop, and think, and give some collective thought into it. And like I said, the bigger picture is when God, when we turn this over to God, and he helps us with this, man, think about the good that can come out of it. So, yes, if we have this issue where we are not controlling our tongue, then we need to be hit to the core and realize the truth of the situation and then turn it over to God and allow him to do great things. Man, we can be the, the positive example that we need in this world. We can build people up. We can encourage them. We can help marriages. We can help addictions, man. These are things that we can truly build the kingdom of God on. And that's the positive in this. Because, yes, this is difficult, and it is a hard teaching. But, man, if we look, if we keep our sights on the end result, on what God can do with this, it is worth the adventure. It's worth the self-control. It's worth not saying it. It's worth turning over to God and saying, okay, God, here's a situation you put me in. Show me what I can do to represent you. Show me what I can do to speak Jesus. Show me what I can do to be the person I really want to be here. Because, God, I don't want to tear people down. God, I don't want to be negative. I don't want to put death in people. I want to bring life, God. So show me what I can do to bring life into the situation. Show me what I can do to speak Jesus. And that's the bigger picture. That's the goal. It's not an easy place to get to, but it's worth it when we get there. And it's not the fact we're going to do it perfect all the time. But it's some little baby steps we take each time, which will get us to where we're speaking more life than we are death. We're being more positive than we are negative with our tongue. And in that way, we can help control our tongue. Let's pray. Father, I give you thanks and praise for who you are. God I, thank, God, I thank you first off for helping me, Lord, for putting up with me long enough, God. God, I know for many years I was not positive in anybody's life. But, Lord, you continued to stay with me because you saw something in me that I never saw. And so, God, you put me through that process of learning and growing and changing. And even though I'm not perfect now, I feel a lot better about the person I am today, Lord. And I love it when you use me to build somebody's life, God, to help them out. And God, I feel like there's many people in this room or who's listening today who feel the same way, Lord. There's this area of their life that they're struggling in, controlling the tongue, whether it's unloving or whether it's judgmental or whether it's just instant reactions to life with no premeditated thought, whether it's just retaliation, whatever issue it is with controlling the tongue, God. But God, I know that you know them too. And you see something good in them too. So God, I just pray today that we can all just surrender to you. 
no matter what the situation is. We trust you, that you have our best interests at heart, and that you can do great things, Lord, even in the areas of our lives where we struggle with the most. God, our misery becomes your message, Lord. So, Father, we turn that over to you today. God, we turn our mouths and our tongues over to you today, Lord. Help us to ponder and not just pour out. Help us to bring life, God. So, Lord, we surrender. Help us speak Jesus, Lord, whatever that is, because we know your love and we know your hope and we know your truth and we know your kind. And so let that, those characteristics of Jesus, be embedded in our speech. Help us react in those ways so we can honor you, build your kingdom, Lord, and help others. So, God, as we continue to worship you, continue to speak to our hearts, and help us as we walk with you one moment at a time, Lord. We surrender to you today, and we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and let's worship God. Let's spend some time with him.